Oh, hi, everyone. Welcome back to the weekly politics show. I'm Councillor Premier with co host Councillor Andrew Wood on Relax Radio. So, we're going to, on this short segment, um, we're slightly overrunning. We're going to talk about the political ramifications of all of this, um, especially with the Labour Party currently um, deciding whether to reselect Mayor John Biggs as their mayoral candidate. Um, Andrew, we do have an executive mayoral model. Um, there's no one else to, you know, pass a parcel to, kind of, if the music has stopped and it, uh, the buck stops with the mayor. Um, would you, as the opposition, would you be asking uh, questions uh, about this to him directly? Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll come back on the implications in terms of the local Labour Party. Yeah, so I mean, it, this is a difficult one because I, I would expect John Biggs not to be involved in the detail of the prosecution because it would have been inappropriate for him to do so. So I assume that this would have been led by Will Tuckley as the council CEO and the senior legal officers uh, would have led on this. Uh, but at the end of the day, he is still ultimately responsible for everything, especially on the, the policy side. So I'm sort of in my head, as I'm, I'm sort of writing an email uh, and I haven't quite decided who to send it to and all the rest of it, but I suspect I'll probably will copy in John and I will make a number of observations about what went wrong and about the lessons and what I think we need to do in, in the future. Um, I think our next council meeting isn't for a couple of months, unfortunately, because we've got holidays. I think it's in September. And this is always a problem. There's always something new that comes up. Um, and as opposition, we can only ask you know one question and raise one motion. And it's always difficult to decide what to to pick on but clearly um you know this will have ramifications within the labor party as well there was a large group of supporters who've been attending each day in court who are supporters of Osama Begum and clearly this afternoon they were delighted by by the results um and uh but I'm not sure everybody in the labor party would have been so delighted uh with with the results but I wouldn't yeah. More than that, so no. I, oh, so just the Labour Party is going through is sort of like selection uh, system. The trigger ballot. It's a bit like a, it's a bit like a football match. The first one to eleven wins, kind of ish. And so far, it's three two mm -hmm. to the mayor. Um, so just to give viewers, so it's all there in the public domain. The East End Inquirer is running a sort of like a running. Uh, league table of uh, all the wards and the scores in each of the wards. So it's like mini football matches happening everywhere. It's a bit like Euro Euro 2020. Um, so you've got mini football matches happening everywhere. So um, two wards have voted to trigger for an open selection. That's Bow East, um, where Councillor Mark Francis and Councillor Rachel Blake are the local councillors, and Whitechapel, where I am the secretary. But obviously I played a very neutral role when running the meeting. Um, but um, but three other wards ha have supported the mayor, but uh, it, it's the first to 11. But it, it, this might have an impact on the, on the sense that we, the local Labour Party is going into a tough election um, with uh, people who were members of the Labour Party, ex-Labour, so, uh, the Aspire, some people call them independent Labour or independent depending on who they talk to on the doorstep kind of thing. um their colors and the leaflets seem to be similar to labor party um but um it's going to be a very tough election and given the previous history of sort of like racial tensions or 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 or, or that kind of whipping up of of tensions it seems like this has come at the worst possible time for the local labor party in the sense that uh, it's cast a lot of doubt in terms of it just seems from the outside and i was talking to someone at work uh, a former police officer and he couldn't understand a labor council prosecuting a labor mp some and the case collapsing something must be wrong here kind of it. the optics of it if to the lay person just seems bizarre kind of which why would a labor council bring a prosecution to labor so so if that's a former police officer uh, a, a former senior police officer saying that. Imagine what lay people in Tower Hamlets are talking about it. But it might it might have an impact uh, uh, on 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 uh, next year's election and on on the Labour Party internal uh, selections uh, uh, as well. <laughs> um, in terms of um, 
yourselves as part of the opposition group I, where do you take it from there sort of like it's, it's left a lot of issues politically where do you take it from there what would your political start be on this andrew so i mean so i mean so i want to say one positive about all of this is there was a worst case scenario uh, for, for 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 tower hamlets as a whole i'm not talking about Osama Begum herself um, so the worst case is actually this could have dragged on for months and months and months uh, into next year. So, for example, if the jury hadn't reached a decision this afternoon, would have needed a retrial. Um, you know, so so this would have been really painful just kind of going through all of this stuff because you know, effectively we've, we've had an MP who's been distracted, understandably, by recent events. So the best outcome from this would either would have been a very clear, you know, she's guilty more than 12 months in jail, which I didn't think would actually happen, but but at least then would, would restart with a new MP or what actually has happened, that complete exoneration, she's innocent, therefore she can put this all behind and, and concentrate on the work because, you know, lots of really major issues in Tower Hamlets, uh, especially fire related, which she needs to focus on. Um, so, I mean, I guess that is the positive. Um, but yeah, this is not great for, for you know, because again, we're dealing with problems again. So last night, audit committee again, the accounts still not signed off. It, it looks like we might have to reopen previous year's accounts now as well. So it, it might be that we have five years of accounts open and unfinished, which from a financial point of view is is not a good thing. But fortunately, we have lots of money, um, 578 million pounds usable reserves. So, you know, that that cushions us. Um but yeah, and, and I said, we, we, we have to think about what, you know, this, we only just got the results a few hours ago. Um, I've got about 30 pages of notes, which I won't show you wow. all. Um, so I need to kind of digest that and then talk to Councillor Peter Gold and decide, you know, what we, we do next. But yeah, I do think lots of lessons that we need to learn and things that need to be sorted out, adding to a long list of, of other problems that need sorting. I, I, think, I think generally the political culture here has to change as well, we need to be much more technocratic, proficient, um, and not be y y yabu about it. Um, some of the briefings um, that I was privy to was just like bizarre kind of briefings, uh, the kind of like um, gung ho kind of approach to this, you know. Uh, I, I, and just just looking at the charges, I knew that it's a very high bar. Mm -hmm. to think um and it just seems like a disconnect um and i I, f I think hopefully it's the beginning of cleaning things up uh in this borough in terms of processes because it's the dysfunctionality it seems of processes and public institutions that actually give this borough a bad name not necessarily is institution uh, individuals it seems like an institutional thing a systematic thing and Hopefully, uh, this is a shot across the bow to get things right uh, for everyone. But um, on this note, we're going to come to an end. We're going to, Andrew and I are going to see how this story develops. If there, if there are any further developments, we might do another session on this. We might have a guest speaker to come to have a look at the wider picture because there are other prosecutions of MPs in the offing as well, uh, Tory MPs, Labour MPs, um, the political impact and just a general sort of like a pr uh, direction of say politics, the law and ethics and how we navigate those tricky waters. So thank you for joining us in this sort of like marathon kind of um, impromptu, you know, hot off the table discussion. I did notice there was a lot of comments, a lot of views. I will be editing the video tonight and push it out so it becomes a term of reference andrew's we're happy to field questions andrew um on your twitter you can find andrew on twitter and field questions i look forward to andrew's analysis and we'll have a discussion whether we do a round two but thank you again for joining us this weekend and uh thank you for watching the weekly policy i'm councillor premier with co-host councillor andrew thank you very much bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.